Hello, this is Katherine Dubberly, the Answer Lady. I'm a big fan of Kiss Looms. I greatly enjoy mine. And I am cooperating with Kelly at Kiss Looms to make you a playlist of all the basic techniques that you might ever want to know on all of the looms. So welcome and enjoy. Let's work a make one increase on the Kiss Loom. I'm working on the regular gauge loom but it would be the same process whatever kiss loom you might have. Fundamentally what we're just going to do is move one stitch or more stitches over. Let's move two over just for the sake of argument. Then we're going to look for the strand of yarn that travels between the two stitches that are real stitches and the empty peg. Here's the strand we need. Let's lift it up and place it on the empty peg. And fundamentally, that's all you have to do. I'll knit across, and then I'll show you what that looks like when we're done. It's not ideal. It leaves a hole. Now, there are certain circumstances where you may not mind that a bit. Perhaps you are creating space for a buttonhole or you plan to run some I-cord or some ribbon through the project at this point. So the hole is not only not a bad thing, it could actually be a good thing. But sometimes it is a bad thing and we can avoid it. Here is what it looks like if you use the simplest form of make one increase. See, that's, that's a good sized hole. As I said, there are ways to use it, but if you don't want it, let's try the alternative method almost the same. Move a stitch outward. So this will be the outside stitch and the presently empty peg will soon have a stitch on it. Pick up the same strand of yarn that I indicated before, the one that runs flat between the two stitches that do have, no, two pegs that do have stitches, and give this a twist. This will be a little tight hang the twist on the empty peg. On a kiss loom, this is by far easiest to do near the edge because our pins are taking up some space. And you can, if you do it, the second stitch in rather than say the tenth stitch in, you can let the yarn tail from the working yarn contribute a little bit of yarn to your twist as needed and then tighten it back up which I just did and we'll knit across and from now on whichever method of make one you use that peg will have a normal stitch on it and there won't be any difference than between that stitch and the other stitches on the row only in the first row when you actually make one new stitch which is I'm sure why the name make one developed only in this very first row will this stitch have anything of a different character than the other stitches. Now let's look down here. Here's the make one without a twist. Here's the make one with a twist. I can open it up and create a hole but it tends to lay um, closer together and be snugger. So that could be a good thing. We have four kinds of increase on this same piece of fabric for you to compare before we go. Here and here, simple make one. Just lift the bar between the two working stitches and hang it on the pegs. Here and here, the make one with a twist. And you can see that they're tidier. Just above those, this is the one we call the half stitch. Simply e-wrapping an additional peg to put it into work and these two here and here are the half hitch created by the twist and laying it on the new peg. I hope that is a helpful visual for you.